people are longing to be appreciated. People are mm. longing to be wanted. People are longing. And uh, I guess that was a sort of the scene in the 60s when you came back from Nigeria. You, were, yeah. you, you really wanted your dad to say, hey, uh, son, I'm proud of you. Oh. Give you a big hug. We all did. And say, welcome home. Yeah, but, we didn't get it. Didn't get it. And, and a whole generation of us was very angry. Not only, be, not only just because we didn't get affection. That, that's, that's important and essential, actually, for a boy. But we didn't get the stuff of manhood. See, uh, it's the father who confirms manhood in a boy. My, my son's uh, 18 now, and he, he lifts weights and goes to his boxing class, and I always come at, boy, wow, look at those muscles. You're doing good, or he, or he does a good job on his English essay. I say, wow, you got some great insights there, son. And I, I, I encourage him. A father's job is to watch for what his child is doing, what, what God is doing in his child, and bless it. And I, I, I watch for what's happening, what, where his passion is, what he's into, and I bless it. And you can just see him straighten up when he receives that. Yeah. And I have to watch myself that I'm not jealous of my own son because he's getting what I never got. <laughs> but you see what happens when you get a whole generation of men like that. Yeah. You get a very angry generation, and we're ready to trash anything that our fathers valued. So in my generation, as hippies, my dad was wearing a short haircut, Navy officer, I let my hair grow long. He's driving his little Chevy 6, I want to get a beat up old Volkswagen. He lives in the East Coast, I go to the West Coast to California. He eats his Cheerio cereal, Wheaties cereal, I eat my, my granola. I mean, I just, exactly the opposite. But what we didn't realize then is whether you're going towards the father as a little boy desperate to be like daddy, or running away from him to try to not be like him, he is still the focus of your life. And that is to say you're not being the man you're created to be. You're not following your own destiny, your own calling. That is to say, to take what God, what you, God has given you through your father, but that's not the end of the story. You, you're, you're, you're then received the best that your dad gave, and you're, you're, you're assigned now. You've got a calling to get on, do the best of what he's giving you for your generation. But we were so caught up in that anger. And I remember because we could not embrace our fathers, we, we, we hated our fathers, that, that we began to, a man who hates his father will hate his own masculinity. And I remember the feminists were becoming very strong back in those, those days. And I remember at the university, one, one, one woman, a very strong feminist, came to me just distraught because something happened between her and her boyfriend. And she said, Gordon, we wanted men to get sensitive, but we didn't want them to get passive. What has happened to men today? They, they don't have any oomph in them. There's no, you, you start a fight or you're in a fight with your boyfriend and he disappears. He doesn't give you any solid response. And I realized, wow, that's what's happened to us. We've become passive because we have no active masculinity that we can embrace and, and, and affirm and want to be like because all we had set up from our father was a negative thing and the feminists were, were reinforcing that. So where do we go? We try to be like women. We let our hair grow long. We try to be gentle, soft, tender, sweet, kind, and it doesn't work. Even the women are crying out, please give us some strength, men. I remember once I was, I was with a guy and his wife. I was, I was counseling him and they, was, they were at each other's throats. And I told him, I said, look, you guys, go to Disneyland. I was, it was in Southern California. Just go and have some fun. They came back the next week, and they were just, just as angry as before, and I knew Mickey Mouse had not done the job. So I said, here we go. I said, okay, uh, what happened? And the, the guy, Joe, his name was uh, not his real name. Oh, she was on my case. I didn't get out of the drive. She's yelling at me, and stop here, turn there. And I said, okay, you've had your two minutes of shouting at her. Now it's your turn, Sally. What do you say? I'm thinking, look, 50-50. And she looks at him. She looks at me, she sighs, and she says, it's true. I said, what do you mean it's true? She says, it's true. She says, I was, a, well, I'll tell you actually what she said. I'm assuming we're a mature audience. She says, I was a witch with a capital B. That was, and those who went to university will figure that one out. But, um, so, uh, and I'm looking, I'm, so what did, what, what did you do? Uh, Joe, when, when, when Sally started yelling at you, well, I just shut up. I figured if she, I shut up, she'd quit. Oh, her eyes roll back into her head. She says, honey. And she's looking at me with this just desperation. A woman, she says, honey, I needed you. Honey, please. I needed you to get me back in control again. I was out of control. I needed you to help me get back centered again. And you ran away from me. And he didn't hit her. It was either the fight or flight option, like a dog. Either you fight or you run away. He didn't hit her. Praise God, that's great. But he ran away. And she said, you abandoned me. I needed you to help me get back in control again. See, that's, that's what happens when, a, and when, and when, you don't have to guess what Joe's life was like as a boy with his dad. They get, in, mom and dad would get in fights. Dad would say, I'm out here, go back, go out to the bar. And mom is furious now. And she turns it on Joe. And, and, and no model 
of strength. God, the, the, the woman wanted strength from the man in order to be fully feminine, and he ran away from her. And that's the story of our generation. If we, can, if we could just articulate that in, in one sentence, uh, which obviously is very hard, but what would you give me in one sentence? We're longing desperately for masculinity. We don't have it. We don't know where to go to get it. And the God who created us as men is waiting, longing for us to come to him and say, I haven't got it. You're the maker of all things. I need it. Please give it to me.